Hey besties, welcome to another episode of So This Happened. How have you been? I know you miss me and I miss you right back. <laughs> you already know how we do it here, bringing you some of the stories that made the buzz recently. And on today's episode, we are going to be talking about the disagreement between Petron and Dangote Refinery over the hike in four prices. Secondly, we have the story of a man who tells us about the sweetest human part he has ever tasted. And lastly, the woman who forces a 19-year-old girl to sleep with her husband so she could bear him children. Now that you know all I have for you today, let's get into the details. Now, the Petroleum Product Retail Outlet Owners Association of Nigeria Petron recently raised concerns over the high cost of petrol from the Dangote refinery, selling at a tip in 990 Naira per liter. So, Petron argued that Dangote Petroleum Refinery is inconsiderate, noting that the refinery benefited from significant concessions during its construction, including favorable access to foreign exchange. Comparing Dangote's pricing to imported petrol, Petron pointed out that as of October 31st, the landing cost of imported petrol was at 978 Naira per litre, suggesting that it could be potentially sold for less. And on top of this, Petron entered at being able to offer a competitive rate, contingent on being granted an import license by the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority. Over the weekend, Dangote Refinery accused Petron and the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria of planning to bring in substandard poor products. Responding to these claims, Petron's Publicity Secretary, Joseph Obeli, defended the association, emphasizing that their goal was to stabilize the Nigerian's poor market by promoting fair competition, which would ideally drive down prices for consumers. Alighting a solution-centric approach, Petron also noted the formation of a strategic business unit called Petro, aimed at addressing the ongoing price fluctuations in the downstream sector. The association argues that the competition is essential in Nigeria's oil market, criticizing monopolistic practices as explorative and primarily profit-driven. Now, let me ask you guys, with Petron pushing for competitive pricing, do you think open competition could finally bring us the relief that we want at the pump? Let's discuss this in the comment section. Now onto the story of a mysterious Ibado man, whose real name is yet unknown, but popularly called a Mistina or Robo, who came on the radio show and confessed to killing over 70 women for ritual purposes, and also added that he usually eats them. Ha! Things are happening in this Nigeria. I don't, I don't even know where to start from. I mean, even went further to school us about the sweetest human part he has eaten. According to him, the sweetest human parts are tongue, palm, and foot. <laughs> Can you imagine? Hey, <laughs> who is going to taste it now and tell us how it really tastes? Anyways, let's move on. The then ritualist and now a pastor, you heard that right, he was a ritualist and now he is a pastor. According to him, claims to have been using this tragic act as a way to renew certain mystical powers mentioning chilling details about the rituals. According to him, these women were often found in well-known spots, places they had let down their guard. He even described how after drawing blood, their bodies were always used in ways that is hard to hear. And as if that wasn't enough, he claims that he does not do it alone, suggesting that some notable figures, including bankers, politicians, would hire him for his services. He allegedly trained people in these practices, from robbery to high-level attacks, with fees as high as 80 million naira per job. See, my own question now is, why is he even still walking freely around? I mean, he has come out to say that he does all of this, and to crown it all, he is now a pastor. I don't have issues with him being a pastor, God can save anybody by grace. But I mean, this is a grievous offence, and the necessary authorities should just do the needful. And now, this one is giving Sarah and Abraham story in the Bible. You guys remember that because Sarah couldn't bear Abraham a child, she made her servant a guy go into bed with her husband. Eh, eh. That is what exactly is happening to this 19-year-old girl who was forced by one Omolara Alashe to sleep with her husband, Ramon El Latif, in a bid to produce children. Actually, the couple's own child had passed away in October 2022, and Alasha couldn't even conceive again. 
so they thought that this victim should save them. Now, the victim, whose name is withheld, was taken in by the couple after her mother's death. However, instead of finding solace, she faced physical and sexual abuse. The woman would wake her up at midnight, strip her naked, and let her husband have his way with her without her consent. The abuse didn't stop there. The wife would also physically assault the victim, sexually molest her without consent, and seize her belongings and financial means. Just imagine, you want to use her to get something for yourself, yet you can't even treat her right. Well, it's the same thing the role model did, so I can never even blame her. Let me just rest my case at this. But currently, the couples have been charged to court, and the case is being adjourned to February 3rd, 2025, for further trial. The couple is standing trial on conspiracy, rape, sexual assault, and stealing, charges brought against them by the Lagos State government. What do you guys think about this act of the couples? I mean, this is something unthinkable, but I wait to hear your opinions in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching and this will be all I have for you today. Do well to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to follow Punch Newspapers on all social media platforms and I will see you in the next video.